and it is time what is up everyone welcome back to hacks murder live my name is tyler ramsby and in this stream or this video if you're watching the fact after after the fact on youtube we are going to switch things up we are going to go from being the red team pen testers we're going to switch over to the blue team and i want to show you guys how i stumbled my way through the fix it challenge room on try hack me this is part of the sock level two learning pathway and if you were with me on stream last night so this video didn't go on youtube but if you're watching me on stream last night you could watch it on youtube under the live tab but i attempted this room and i got I don't know, halfway through it before I rage quit because I couldn't figure out the regular expressions to pull certain things out of the Splunk logs and it was just driving me crazy uh, that it wasn't working, that I could not figure it out. And if you guys remember, I ended that stream by saying, I'm never looking at this room again, I'm not going back to it. All right, I've said that about so many challenges and yet I've gone back to like every single one of them. I'm pretty sure I quit the OSCP at least 15 times, but I still took the exam and passed it, right? Like I, I always say that, but I cannot leave a challenge unsolved. So here's what I did. I first try to look for a walkthrough. And if you look for walkthroughs for the fix it room on try hack me, there aren't many, there are a few walkthroughs, but they do not explain the regular expression part of it very well. They give you the full string that you can use. You can copy and paste it. You can solve the challenge that way. But I wanted to be able to do it myself. I didn't want to just copy and paste. I wanted to understand what was I missing? How could I do this if I was in uh, a sock and I had to configure these Splunk roles? So I thought, what are my weak areas right now? And it came down to really, well, three things. Number one is patience. <laughs> I'm impatient when it comes to learning. So one was patience. The second was regular expressions. I just am not very good at regular expressions. And the third was Splunk. My only experience with Splunk is the learning pass and try hack me. And although they are good, they are not the real world. So there's things that the learning pass I'm sure miss that I just didn't fully comprehend where someone who with a lot of Splunk experience probably could have dove into this and solved it quickly. So I spent time today learning more about regular expressions as well as learning a little more about Splunk. Let me share my screen. I'll share with you guys some of the resources I found helpful. First, here's the path that I'm doing. This is sock level two. And although I am a pen tester, I do enjoy the blue team side of things and learning about it. So you can see I did all of log analysis. I finally finished all of advanced Splunk. I did all of these rooms. Fix it was the room I finally completed today. And this video is going to be a little bit different than my other videos. A lot of my videos, I just stumble through it live. Uh, to be fully transparent, I have finally done this room myself, but I do want to share with you my full thought process as we go through it. And if you want to see my first stumble through it on stream where I rage quit, go to YouTube, go to the live tab and watch my stream from yesterday. And you can see me rage quit uh, on that. So fix it is what I ended up doing. But if we go up here, what I did was like, I think I said learn regex. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I think it was this one. So here's what I did. There's this like learn regex, this regexlearn.com. It brings you through an intro and goes to some pretty in-depth uh, regular expressions. And if it would show, actually, let me just F11 out of here. There's 56 different ones. So it gives you like you practice hands-on and then it'll give you like practice ones where it doesn't give you the answer and you have to solve it. I did all 56 of these. And then I also went back to Splunk and just started uh, trying to understand Splunk a little bit better and found out I don't even need full regular expressions to do what I was trying to do. The rooms or the walkthroughs that I've seen do it the regular expression way, which is fine, but I found a way to do it. It's a mix of GUI and regular expressions that I found a lot easier. And I'm guessing this is the way most uh, SOC analysts would probably do it in the real world. So I wanna show you guys my full process as I worked my way through this fix it room. Before I do that, let me just check the chat, make sure I'm not missing anything on LinkedIn, Twitch, and YouTube. I don't think I am. So let's go ahead and dive into this. I already launched my room. And the first thing, uh, let me reset my progress on here. And we'll kind of go through the flags together. If you want to follow along, I think it's up here. We'll reset all my hard earned progress. And there we go. Progress is reset. The first thing that I notice is it works a lot better if you do this not from this fix it machine, but from the actual attack box or from your own virtual machine. So the first thing we have to do is we do have to open up the fix it machine. If you open in split view, you should see this. And we'll go ahead and open up our terminal. We're going to sudo password Ubuntu. Let's change our user's password to try hack me one, two, three, try hack me one, two, three. Now that that's done, we can go to our attack box and I'm going to go ahead and make this full screen. We'll minimize it here. 
F11 again, just because I like it when it's full screen like this. We'll allow copy and pasting. And now we should be able to SSH into here. So we'll do it from the terminal here and we'll do everything from our attack box. I just noticed it's much faster. So Ubuntu, paste in our IP. Yes, try hack me one, two, three. And then you can see this user has full pseudo permission. So we'll just do pseudo password root. Same thing, try hack me one, two, three. Try hack me one, two, three. And now we're gonna switch over to our root user because a lot of the stuff we need a root permission. So we have that going, we have access to this. And now we can go ahead and get started with some of this challenge. So if we look at it right here, it says in this challenge room, we will act as John who has recently cleared his third screening interview for the SOC level two position at um, MSSP Sabertees LTD. And a final challenge is ready to test our knowledge. I kind of failed it yesterday, but hey, I. I figured it out, where you will be required to apply the knowledge to fix the problems in Splunk. You are presented with a Splunk instance and the network logs being ingested from an unknown device. So prerequisites, and then room machine, it just says, hey, go ahead and get started, it says where Splunk is installed, and our challenge is divided into three levels. So level one is we need to fix event boundaries. Fix the event boundaries in Splunk. As the image below shows, Splunk cannot determine the event boundaries as the events are coming from an unknown uh, device so let me show you i didn't actually struggle with this yesterday when i did this well i did a little bit because i had a typo but once i fixed the typo we were good in order to do that let's just show you what those uh, events look like right now so we'll get firefox pulled up on our attack box and we'll go http this 8000 it does take a little bit for splunk to load so we'll give it a second And guys, I can't even express how happy I was when I finally solved this machine today and doing it in a way that I think will be easier for other people to follow who uh, are like me and suck at regular expression, which is something I just need to brush up on more. After doing that tutorial I showed you, it, I'm a lot better at it now. I'm still not great at it. But if we go over to search and reporting here in Splunk, and finally, if we just index it by main, you can see here is the issue. Uh, this is actually one log, but it's split up into two log sources. We have network log here from country South Africa, right? So we need to put this all together. And so if we look at this, we know that with regular expressions, we need to identify our network log here. And if we go over to the room questions, well, that, that's level one. Level two is we're going to extract custom fields. We'll get to that, though. But it says, what is the full path of the fix it app directory? Let's go ahead and work through these questions, and then we'll be able to fix that first error that we see. That's the first thing we need to do is do level one. So the full path to the fix it app directory is just a standard path. If we open our terminal back up, we will go to cd opt splunk etsy apps fix it. Yep, I was right. So that's what it is. So we'll go ahead and copy that. What stands up will we use to define the event boundary in this multi-line event case? Now, you really need to do this room first. This is the Splunk data manipulation room. Really good room. If you're like me and don't have any experience with Splunk, you cannot do the fix it room without doing this room ahead of time. And it provides all the information that we basically need. And the stanzas, if I remember which one we talk about, is it this one? Okay, so these are different stanzas. So Splunk configurations contain various stanza configs that define how data is processed and indexed. These stanzas have a certain purpose and it's important to understand what these are and how they are used. So we have a brief summary of the common stanzas below. If we scroll through here, we have this break only before and break only after. So kind of two sides of the same coin. Break only before, before is defines a regular expression pattern that marks the beginning of an event. The beginning of our event, of course, is network logs. This stands that you use to identify specific patterns in the data that indicate the start of a new event. Now, break only after is kind of the opposite. It specifies a regular exp expression pattern that marks the end of an event. It is used to identify patterns in the data that indicate the completion of an event.
So because ours begins with that network log text, and that's how we want to know, hey, here's where a new event is starting, that is the stanza that we want to use. And I'll show you how that stanza kind of fits into things, but we'll type that in there. It says, in the inputs.conf, what is the full path of the network log script? Now, inputs.conf is one of these uh, standard logs over here, not logs, but configurations. So let's just review what that is. Inputs.conf, the purpose is it defines data inputs and how to collect data from different sources. So if we're setting up logging in Splunk, this is where those logs go, or this is how we're pulling it out in inputs.conf. So if we go to our inputs.conf here, cd default ls cat inputs.conf, you can see this is where we're getting it. Opt, Splunk, Etsy, Apps, Fix It, Bin, and Network Logs. And that is what it's looking for there. So let's go and copy that. Go over to Fix It and put that in there. So what rejects pattern will help us to find the event start? Now, if you're a noob like me, ChatGPT does come in clutch here. So let's see if he gives us the right answer this time. We can say, you can even see when I was working through this before. We can say, hello, robot friend. Give me rejects that pulls out network log. We'll do. Okay, he actually did not do it right. He's still not doing it right. So he did this uh, correctly for us before. I want to see if I asked it differently. Give me a regex that pulls out network log. Certainly, this this is the correct um, answer here. This regex right here. And he explains it a little bit. We have to use the escape character first because of these brackets. And I learned this when I was going through my my regular expression tutorial I showed you before, that brackets are used for a bunch of other stuff. So to specify a bracket, that's why we have this escape character. So you do the same thing in the Linux terminal to escape certain input. And with regex, you can just specify like the actual string. And that's all that we're doing here, is we're specifying the actual string of network log. And then of course, we're escaping it again, right there. So if we copy this, put it in there, that is a reject pattern that will help us to find the event start. Now, if we go back to data manipulation, we actually have an example of fixing a similar issue here. So this is the event boundaries that we fixed in that previous room. And a very similar issue where we had to combine these different events. So this, you can ignore this because this is creating the events, it's already created for us in this challenge room. But you can see, hey, we have the same problem. So how do we fix the event boundary? Well, in this one, they used a regex pattern of disconnect connect right there. And then we have to create a props.conf in the default directory. So uh, props.conf, let's just remind ourselves once again, what the heck is props.conf? It says the purpose is specifies parsing rules for different source types to extract fields and define field extractions. So suppose you have a custom source type named my source type, and you want to extract fields using regular expressions, you can define them in props.conf. So let's scroll back down to event boundaries. And we're going to make a props.conf that is very similar to this. So nano props, props.conf network lo logs don't do this guys, this is what failed me in my first stream. And these have been underscore network logs. And if we just look at the syntax here, we can actually copy this and we'll modify it according to for, for our purposes. There's a few things that we need to change should line merge equals true, that's totally fine. But remember, we're not gonna must break before we need to do break only before or not must break after must break after remember, that's going to break it on the end of the string, the end of the log, we want to do it before the log on that network log text. So let's change this to the correct stanza, which is that right there. And then if we go back to our rejects pattern of network log, which even I could do that one guys, once I understood the syntax, even I could have made that one. So network log and very simple. Once again, all we're doing is specifying the string and the the slashes are just to escape the brackets. Let's go ahead and save that. And once that is saved, we can restart Splunk. 
So let's restart Splunk and hopefully that fixed that last issue. If not, it's because I have something wrong in my syntax, which is always very possible. Unfortunately, and this is the downside of doing this challenge room, every time we want to test our modification here, we have to restart Splunk and it takes a few minutes. But here is what I discovered. Once Splunk is back up and we fix this initial boundary issue, what we are able to do, making sure all this looks good, no weird errors, invalid key and stanza. Oh, that's not even something I did. So that's just a default thing. Anyways, once we fix this initial boundary error, all the other changes we can make within the Splunk interface. The benefit of that is we do not have to restart the Splunk instance when we do it. So that actually went a lot faster than it usually does. Once the Splunk is restarted once, we can modify everything else within Splunk as long as everything works well. So let's go ahead and check that out. And we'll just open a new tab so we don't have any weird cache stuff and let's do this and see if our boundaries are fixed. Search and reporting. And we'll do the same thing. Index equals main. And I'm going to change it to all time because that's what we'll need to answer the questions. All right, beautiful. So you can see that we were able to take everything out now. We have a network log, all in one log. So level one of our challenge is complete. The rest of these questions, we need to, well, basically do what we've been doing. And we first, we fix the event boundaries. We can check that off. Here, guys, is where I got stuck bad yesterday on stream. And that is these extract custom fields. I was trying to use regex. I couldn't get it working. I edited a, a few different files. So the way the room shows you to do this, and this is probably the hacker way, the, the way for smart people, <laughs> uh, not me when it comes to this, is if we scroll down on this other room, just to be clear, I'm on the data manipulation room. Extracting custom fields, the way that we have to do this, like this manual way here, is we have to first create a pattern. So if we extract users, we have to create a pattern that identifies the user field. Then we have to update transforms.conf and put the information in there saying, hey, this is our rejects. We want to get the user name out of there and we want to write the meta true. So we have to create the transforms.conf. Then we have to update prompts.conf in order to specify the transform VPN going back to the VPM custom fields. And then we have to create an update fields.conf saying, hey, we want the username, we want to index it true. All right, so uh, quite a process to say the least, but that is actually the answer to the one of the questions. But I'm gonna show you guys a way to do it without having to do any of these comps because every time you do one of these, you have to restart Splunk, wait, sometimes two minutes just to test, see that you did it wrong, and then do it again. It's very hard to troubleshoot it this way, in my humble opinion. So let's go and answer the one question we need for that, though. If we go to fix it, it is this one. What configuration files were it used to fix our problems? Alphabet order, file one, file two, file three. And that comes from these. That's technically how you would fix it. Uh, fix it. Fix it. Transforms, uh, props.conf, and fields. So let's do fields.com first. All right, fields.com. And then props.com, I believe if I know the alphabet. There we go. But now let me show you guys the way I discovered that made my life a lot easier. I did try to do this on stream yesterday, but it wasn't working properly for me. And we'll see if we can reverse engineer what I actually did wrong then. On the actual Splunk GUI, we have down here, extract new fields. Let's go ahead and click that. And now we are going to say, hey, select the sample. We'll just select this first one right there. Here's our sample and then click next. Selection, mesh, uh, selection method, regular expression, next. And now it says, hey, what do you want to select? Well, we want to get this user. So let's do Robert Wilson. We don't want to include the extra space. So we'll call it username. Add extraction. And you can see it's pulling it all out. We'll click next, next, finish. Explore the fields I just created in search. And we're just going to change this back to index equals main. Otherwise, it kind of messes up our results. So we have to change this to all time. 
And now we have usernames here. If we click that, it pulled out all the usernames correctly and we extracted that field. So if we go to our questions, the f one of the questions is how many usernames? So let's answer that, 28. Now, what else do we need to extract? We need to extract the country. So very similar process, extract new fields. We'll click this one, hit next, regular expression, next, select fields, our country is Japan. Oh, I did not like that, there we go. Add extraction. Now you can see we have an issue here. It's not grabbing all the ones that have like two letters in it because if we look at the regular expression, I believe, well, it actually looks like it might be doing it right. So we're looking at country and then word plus or should add anything else after that. Let's double check. So you can actually see when I was doing it here, I said, hey, modify it so it, it captures countries with two words, like United Kingdom as well. So yeah, here is the modification I had to make. And once again, using chat GPT to do it because I'm still not that great at regular expressions, but I'm not as bad as I was, right? So if we edit this regular expression here and do that, preview, it's capturing it now. It's capturing the ad as well, but who cares? That, that'll that work. And maybe, you know, maybe I didn't actually need to do it that way. That's how I did it. Oh, uh, let's just keep going. I believe this is how I did it. We'll see if it works. We'll click finish. Let's explore the fields that we created and see if we can answer the question about countries because then we know if it worked properly. But I'm 99% certain that's how I did it and I completed the room. Let's go to all time. Hit search, and if we look down at this, one more field, country. Country there, 12, we click that. We have at at all of them, but who cares? It still does the job and <laughs> showing us the country, right? So if we go down to how many countries, 12, that is correct. So we were able to do that properly. And now we need to extract the source IP. So let's give that a shot following a very similar process. Extract new fields. Select this one. Next, regular expression, next. And very simply, copy the IP. Add extraction, next, next, finish. Explore the fields I just created in search index equals main and we have source IP right here and we have all of our IPs and the question for source IP how many source IPs are captured in the log it looks like well let's make sure we do this to all time or we might not have the right answer well it's still the same answer 52 and now it says uh, well, is there any more that we need to do? Oh, department and domain. All right, so let's do that. We can go ahead and do the same thing, extract new fields. And we'll select an example, click next, regular expression, next. And are we doing departments now? Yeah. So the department is right here, IT department department add extraction next next finish explore the fields index equals main all time department six you can see our different departments did we have any questions with departments here how many departments are captured six okay I think we have one more and that's domain so let's do the same thing extract new fields
and our domain is the course is cybertrees.thm. We could just answer that question, but we'll see if we can extract it. Regular expression, next, cybertrees.thm. Next, next, finish. Oh, sorry, no gamer gamer, just seeing your message. Index equals main. Change it to all time, and we should see a domain field now in Splunk, and we only have one domain of cybertrees.thm, and I think that's all the answer. What's, what's the capture domain? Cybertrees. Whoops, I, cyber tees, tees, not trees. Come on, Tyler. Okay, now we can answer this question. What are the top two countries the user Robert tried to access the domain from? Answer in comma separated in alphabetical order format country one, country two. So go back over to here. We can go ahead and click our usernames, Robert. And now from Robert, we can of course click country. And we can see the top 10 is Canada and United States. And now, so I, I got this one, I guess, on my first walkthrough because I just happened to see it when I was messing around with my regular expression patterns. I just saw this in the logs, the secret document.pdf. I wonder what the proper way to find that would be because I didn't actually try that before. If we go, uh, to index equals main. Can I just like control F this beast? I mean, that works. I don't know if that's the right way you're supposed to do it, but I can see it right there. Secret document PDF. So it's Sarah Hall. And guys, there it is. So a shorter stream, I'm not actually gonna stream any, any more than this. I just wanted to jump on and show you guys how I ended up fixing this. There's only a few walkthroughs I found for the fix it room and none of the walkthroughs that I see go through the way I just showed you. It goes through the other way, which is fine when you have all the answers, but really difficult to troubleshoot because like I was saying, every time you'd update one of those comp files, you'd have to fully restart Splunk, log back in, see, hey, is it working? And, and when it's not, because it's gonna take a few tries, then you have to redo the whole thing again. Whereas this way, you can actually use Splunk itself to pull out the patterns that you need, apply it in real time, and then reanalyze the logs, re-index the logs and see, hey, here's what I'm missing, here's what I need to analyze, but here's how I eventually solved the room that made me rage quit yesterday. Once I understood how Splunk actually worked, it was a lot easier. So guys, although this is a shorter stream, I do want to remind you that I will be streaming every single day. Starting December 1st, we will be going through the Avenue of Cyber Challenges together at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Additionally, I have videos coming out on my YouTube channel every single day up until then. So I have a video coming out tomorrow, the day after that, day after that. So stay tuned to my YouTube. That's my main platform. If you're not subscribed to me on YouTube, just go to youtube.com, search for my name, Tyler Ramsby. You will find my channel there. And I'm always releasing new videos of me working through challenges. Most of the time is from kind of a black box perspective where I have not prepped ahead of time and I just dive into it blind. This one, of course, I did dive into blind yesterday, sort of failed in the process, but hey, you only fail if you don't learn. And I went back to it, learned some more and was able to solve the challenge and just resolved it for you guys and demonstrated my process. So for anyone else who was stuck on this, and felt like a noob like I did. I really hope this video is helpful for you. And uh, happy hacking, guys. I will catch you in the next one. See ya.